Hi, my name is Laura Melbourne. My poster presents my student work at Rutgers University examining archival ethics and practice, specifically description of materials related to eugenics. I am a white, heterosexual, and cisgender female not currently living with a disability. I conducted this research from my home on the traditional territory of the Leni Lenape. Eugenics programs in the United States have targeted immigrants, Black, Indigenous, Asian, and Latinx people, gay people and transgender people, and people with disabilities. My poster and presentation do include screenshots of archival description that use harmful language drawn from racist archival materials. The term eugenics was first developed by Francis Galton in 1883 as he campaigned for a new science which deals with all influences that improve and develop the inborn qualities of a race. Through the formation of eugenic societies around the world, the popular eugenics movement was used to justify anti-immigration laws, forcible sterilization, and ultimately genocide. Yet, eugenics is also a foundational component of modern genetics. While it may no longer be termed eugenics, scientists and society debate the role of genetics counseling, bioethics, and reproductive sciences today, and struggle against abuses like non-consensual sterilization. Accordingly, eugenics is a major research topic for scientists and historians, and the simple word cloud shows multidisciplinary topics as presented in the archive grid search results for the word eugenics. Archival description has a critical role to play to understand this complex topic, but what ethical responsibility do archivists have, specifically when describing these materials? Is it better to take a neutral approach as advocated by Mark A. Green and strive to reduce the archivist's influence on the archive? If no archive is innocent, as to claim by Elizabeth Yale, then should we consider the critique of whiteness as an archival imperative by Mario H. Ramirez, especially in overtly racist subjects like eugenics? To understand this further, I conducted a survey of archives and case studies related to eugenics. In this poster, I present three highlights from my findings. The Eugenics Records Office Records Finding Aid is clear, helpful, and available online. It includes collection notes that provide additional historical context. Here I've displayed the information that has been added regarding African American history. The note demonstrates the harmful language used within the archival materials themselves and does not present alternatives. Each series also has an additional description. However, these often take a neutral approach, leaving out context and potentially creating harm. For example, the archives include a collection by Harry H. Laughlin on the topic of blindness, including his correspondence with Lucian Howe. Howe was a prominent ophthalmologist and eugenicist who argued that blind people should not be permitted to marry and procreate. There's no historical note given at the series or collection level that calls out the overall context for disability studies, and disability and blindness are not included as indexing terms. I admit my next example is from a library and not an archive. In 2015, librarians at the Robert L. Brown History of Medicine Collection at University of Buffalo conducted a seminar to discuss Edward Pernkamp's anatomical atlas that includes illustrations of Jewish Holocaust victims. The seminar included a presentation on the history of the atlas and its creation. At the conclusion, participating medical students were asked, what should the library do with its copies? All the participants advocated for unrestricted access with historical context provided, and a selection further requested additional promotion to actively tell the story of the Atlas. None wanted the materials to be suppressed or withdrawn, and they asked for the historical context to be added to the archive. I have included here the current catalog entry for the Atlas as an example of contextual description. The Living Archives on Eugenics in Western Canada seek to raise awareness about the history of eugenics through several projects. Its video oral histories are created, described, and controlled by those whose lives they document. Here, I've shown a sample of display of topics within the archives and a sample video with its description. A qualitative impact study concluded that the Living Archives project was critical and empowering for sterilization survivors and life-changing for its students and participants. The survivor-centered approach, like that proposed by Michelle Caswell, is both restorative for the com affected communities and presents a more thorough archival description of the subject for researchers. Overall, my survey of description in eugenics archives indicates a neutral approach can do additional harm, while a restorative approach can better serve archival practice. Specifically, a survivor-centered approach and perspectives from communities that have been directly affected by the eugenics movement would help ensure an ethic of care. Thank you for visiting. I welcome the chance to discuss this topic further in the comments.